Uh, good evening, friends. Welcome for today's literary forum, featuring uh, poetry readings by the eminent uh, Slovenian poet Barbara Bogacic. So, before going any further, I would like to welcome uh, the guest with the uh, books from Tharik Academy. Today's forum will be chaired by Professor K. Sachidamanda. <laughs> Friends, uh, Miss um, Barbara Pogacnik is a noted Slovenian poet, translator, and critic. She did a master's at Sorbonne in Paris and has four poetic collections to her credit. Her selected poems are penned in Romanian, French, Spaniel, Croatian, as well as Hindi. Her poetry in translations have partially appeared in 30 languages. She has participated in more than 50 different literary manifestations across the globe and translated her works of more than 150 poets and writers into Slovenian. She has been a member of several literary juries, is a member of PEM and is on the board of Slovenian Writers Association. Her first volume of poetry, Pop Labor, was nominated for the Best First Book Award and the Chain Book Prize. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, Professor K. Sachidananda is one of the most uh, distinguished uh, uh, writers and poets of modern India. He writes in Malayalam and English. He's a, he's a playwright, essayist, a bilingual critic, and translator. He was a former secretary of Sahitya Academy and has published more than 25 collections of poetry in Malayalam, more than 35 collections of poetry in 22 languages, including Arabic, Chinese, English, German, Irish, Italian, this is all the major Indian languages. He has uh, so far won more than 50 regional, national, and international awards for his literary contributions, including Kerala Sahitya Academy Award in five genres, Sahitya Academy Award, Kusmaharaj Award, Gangadhar Mehar Award, Kavi Samra Kupendra Banja Award, Kuvimba Award, Erathachan Award, the highest award for a writer in Kerala, besides uh, Poetry for Peace, International Award from UAE, Knighthood from the Government of Italy, and Indo Indian Friendship Medal from the Government of Poland. He was in the left group uh, list of 10 probable Nobel Prize winners for the year 2011. He is, uh, he is traveling actually, he is traveling uh, across the globe, uh, reading poetry and lecturing constantly on Indian literature. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. 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 Uh, he's like homecoming. And I'm particularly happy today to be chairing this session uh, with a Slovenian poet. Because I have a minor Slovenian connection in the sense that uh, I have been twice to Slovenia to take part in the Vilenica Poetry Festival, which is easily one of the finest poetry festivals I have taken part in. Of course, uh, by numbers, maybe the Medellin is a uh, huge festivals, but I have seen uh, Rotterdam and uh, Vilenka festival to be, I mean in terms of quality, perhaps two of the best poetry festivals in the world. Uh, so it was a pressure to, to be there, to be reading, to be to be a jury for the Vilenka Prize, the chair of the jury for the Vilenka Prize once, and also uh, to edit an anthology of Indian poetry in Slovenian, which uh, many of you must have seen, uh, it's called Kavita. Uh, this was edited by me uh, along, along with uh, Evard Frisar, who is a major uh, playwright, essentially a playwright uh, in, in Slovenia. Uh, I made the selection and then he chose the translators. I, I, I find that some, they are some of the best poets uh, from all Slovenia who have done the translations, so I'm sure uh, the anthology should have some, some kind of quality. I, so I shouldn't claim much since I made the selection myself. Uh, well, um, and one of the things I have noted about, I don't want to, uh, to, to go, go on speaking, I would only say that uh, I have seen that poetry from smaller countries is now emerging in a major way. You know, there was a time 
between French and German and Spanish and all those major European language, languages dominated the uh, dominated world of poetry. But now I find you know, a, a smaller countries like Estonia or Latvia or uh, Lithuania or Iceland or Slovenia uh, coming up. It is like the margins suddenly gaining strength and occupying the center stage. Uh, and, and that I think is an extremely important movement, even in political uh, terms. Uh, you know, the, it is like the margins getting strong, strong and uh, uh, invading the center and, uh, and uh, claiming their pride of place in the uh, in the literary space. Uh, so that way, I, I, uh, I that way too, I have especially interest in Slovenian literature, Slovenian uh, poetry in uh, in uh, in particular. Uh, well, I, I, I have been a great admirer of many Soviet poets, especially Thomas, uh, Thomas whom, uh, whom I have met thrice, uh, once in Warsaw and once in, uh, once in Soviet itself. Uh, unfortunately, he is no more, and, uh, and, and I think he almost initiated kind of movement which must have impacted uh, 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 later writing, including because I read something about you, and I, I find that many people say that you also have been influenced in some way. Uh, maybe indirectly, all of us are influenced anyway, the senior poets, uh, by, by, by Thomas's poetry. And uh, Boris Novak and Yosiposti, and all these are somewhat familiar names to uh, the Indians who read poetry, uh, poetry seriously. And now a lot of Slovenian poetry, this is for you, that is, a lot of Slovenian poetry is available in English translation, unlike uh, earlier. Um, there is an anthology called uh, a, bridge, uh, a Bridge of Voices. Uh, there is another called contemporary Slovenian poetry, uh, six Slovenian poets, uh, Angel of Oblivion uh, by by Maja, by Maya, yeah. And then, then of course, the Thomas's uh, collections like uh, Justice and Black Ocean, and another called Prisoners of Freedom. Uh, so there are there are quite a few collections of Slovenian poetry available in English, uh, so that uh, uh, we need not be that alien to the whole Slovenian poetry. Poetic culture, and especially after the Second World War, Slovenian poetry has gained a lot of strength, and uh, there is a lot of uh, experiment happening there. Uh, it is described by many works, uh, you know. Uh, even though I don't believe so much in uh, in, the, in all these uh, academic jargons, even though I have been academic myself uh, apologetically, uh, well, you know, uh, there are works like uh, intuition, uh, postmodernism, new romanticism, postromanticism. New expressionism, post symbolism, new avant-garde, ludism, linguism, autopoetics, auto a, a lot of terms are uh, you know, used to describe the kind of churning that, is, that has been happening in Slovenian poetry in the last maybe 30 or 40 years. Uh, so there is a lot of experiment, there is a, there is a, a kind of a focus on language per se, language, language as such, which I find uh, particularly fascinating because ultimately language is uh, the, the material of which poetry is made. And, uh, and, and so, uh, so, so Slovenian poetry in short is passing through a major uh, evolutionary, evolutionary phase and uh, uh, sometimes uh, the story is divided into stages like post, uh, the post modernism, modernism and radical modernism and all that. I don't know how far these concepts are really uh, old water, but then, uh, well, historians need these concepts, you know, to speak about and periodize uh, into histories. Uh, uh, and also, uh, there is an understanding of the importance of language, uh, and all the of course, uh, the, the content. Uh, and uh, so there's an organic approach to Slovenian poetry, which is uh, getting developed uh, in Slovenian uh, critical world. Which, which again I, I find uh, very fascinating because something like that is happening here. Because there was a time when all, all of our critics spoke about the content of uh, literature. Uh, the progressives, particularly, they speak for the content and they didn't care much about the language. And then came a phase where language became, you know, predominant, language alone. And now uh, the criticism, I think, has reached a kind of balanced phase where we speak uh, of language, but language is also an expression of content, which coexist and organically, they are organically bounded together. And you cannot separate content from language and language from content, especially in the context of a major art like, uh, like, like poetry. So there is uh, this kind of a, an organic aesthetics that is developing in the Indian languages as well as in 
many of the European language, the IP words. So it's in this particular context that now uh, we are we are uh, going to listen to Barbara's uh, uh, poetry. Uh, already uh, she has been uh, biographically introduced. And I was also reading up something about you that uh, uh, I, I just quote two or three sentences from one of your translators in international uh, poetry. Yeah. Uh, even more than richness, a true abundance characterizes the work of Bar uh, Barbara. Uh, you you say Koka Kokasnik? Yes. Kokasnik, yes. Uh, Barbara Kokasnik. It is an eruption of ceaseless discoveries that it can be called hypermetaphorical. The horse in the apartment, uh, the, the partly unbuttoned robe, the woolly knot in the throat, a plucked brow. Blazing birds, enchanting images such as these, combined with many more, can form one single poem. So, so there is a density of uh, images uh, in, her, in, her, in her poetry that makes it particularly, uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, distinguished. So, and uh, someone has called it uh, a kind of hyper sense which is working uh, within uh, within her poetry as a major. Uh, Force. And so she continues the tradition of uh, Slovenian Impressionism uh, and, and also extends uh, 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 what, uh, what is uh, taken from uh, the works of uh, Thomas Salamon. And thus she is, uh, 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 she has, again, she has been called, she lets a brilliant gaze uh, well up in the bad heart of Europe. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, description of. Uh, uh, which can make any poet proud, uh, with the lightness and clearness of champagne, the ballad bring barracks uh, which uh, with its void bubbles. So, uh, so in short, she is a very important voice uh, that we need to listen to from uh, Slovenia writing today. And uh, I, I, don't, I have some other poems I have not read, I will definitely would like to listen uh, uh, to you, all of us would love to listen to you. Uh, maybe at least uh, one of the poems in Slovenian so that uh, uh, our people have an idea of the language and the music and then of course, uh, unfortunately, in English. Yes. Thank you. So, I would like to thank you all for coming and also to thank the Academy for inviting me. Uh, uh, to uh, respect it, uh, for uh, introducing Slovenian poetry and uh, also me within this uh, creative uh, chaos, let's say. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Magalesh um, who whom I've been um, corresponding with and uh, who said that he had uh, some of my poets' um, poems uh, in Hindi, translated in Hindi. Um, so that might come later when we discuss uh, the linguistic um, material, because obviously it's never easy to translate poetry. Um, poetry, uh, why is India so interesting uh, for me? Because, um, because India, as far as I've uh, connected to it now, uh, respects uh, all and every language that is living within this uh, democratic continent. And um, this is so important also for us uh, Slovenians because we have been a um, long time, um, we are a small language which now has gained all the attributes of a big language um, like uh, in four years uh, we're going to have a great honor to be the, the guest of honor of Frankfurt Book Fair uh, which is going to be the major event of which we've never dreamed uh, maybe 30 years ago when I was still uh, at college and um, um, we were feeling at that time that Slovenian was like an unknown language that would, uh, everybody who writes in this language would be um, a kind of depressed. <laughs> uh, 
but at the same time, this was a very good period for our poets because um, um, I found a, um, a theory about uh, motivation in the language. Like there is a phase of motivation in the language and a phase of decline in, in the language. So when um, we were, um, you, you were mentioning, uh, for example, the lose of uh, the strength of uh, English and French poetry, it is, um, it is a kind of process where language, once it has reached this moment of um, this peak of development, it might decline. When the, the luxury of the language has done everything it can, so then the poets maybe cannot um, do anymore. Um, while I think in India there is uh, there is the same as it was in Slovenia, and maybe since we have all these attributes of uh, of a big language, let's say. Um, it's, uh, we will see how it will happen now. It's, uh, the processes that are going on in Slovenia and poetry now are quite different than the ones that were going on um, like 30 years ago. But I must say I was, I was brought up at that time and poetry was for us um, the biggest um, idea. Um, I think that this is this might be true for all small languages that are not yet um, recognized. Um, and I really admire the coexistence of, of like big like, like India as uh, one of the biggest world languages, Hindi, and uh, on the other side, a lot of small languages that are maybe on the verge of being extinct. So this is the a wonderful combination <laughs> to be inspired of. So, um, yes, um, I, uh, I warmly hope that our collaboration will continue also in the future because I think we have a lot of things to say to each other. Um, so, um, Yes, maybe I will uh, read the poem you were quoting from first. Um, it is a poem from my last poetry book, um, where um, where I speak. Um, there is a section that speaks about the house as the um, the, the let's say. Um, the I. So every every individual has like a form of the house. So I am treating this term, this this theme of the house, like um, psychological um, issue. So here is one of the poems. Opinieni žerali first in Slovenia. Kusim se vrnila domo. Je moje stanovanje uzdihnilo kot konj, ki so mu naložili preveliko težo. Soba, ki se me zapustila, je bila rahno razmaknjena kot srajca od peta na prsi. Rahno očkrnjeno dihanje, dolgo preprečeno dihanje. In balkon je visel na dna kot dolgo nogo jutro, Kjerega so se obračali ognjeni železni žarjavi. Skušala sem pregrizniti sebi voca v polno grlo. Prokar obrana dlana mi je zahil omhnila. Žarjavi je mogoče obrniti svet na glavo. Žarjavi gradijo kot tisoči konj. Rušenje ljubezni je dobrotrajen proces. Včasih kot guljeno brvi, drugič, kot operacija brez narkoze. Gladilnik težko diha, plinska napoljava bliska in vrejne ima hud pogled. Kaplja 
se boš čas priljiva pri poroba v lazenu posodu. Videti je, kot bi so zdravanje nekdo naselil na toliko mojih plasteh, med tem, ko sem potovarala in je zdravanje v dano čakala na mojo vrtitve. Zdaj, ki je tu priče, ogen, ki jo govim, dobri plan, močni zamahi, ki ni, se loči od vodi, od njeni čerja, od njeni čerja. Flaming Cranes. This is the translation of Julia Petrč and the Welsh poet and writer Christopher Murray. When I got back home, my apartment sighed. A drawed horse, straining at the weight. The room I had abandoned was left ajar, like an unbuttoned shirt, a breathing slightly open, a breathing long obstructed. The balcony hung over us like a long black morning full of turning iron cranes. I tried to gnaw through the gray wool knot in my throat. The freshly washed palm dropped for a moment. Cranes can turn the world down or up. They build like thousands of horses. The demolishing of love is an enduring process. At times, it feels like plucking eyebrows, then like an operation without anesthetic. The fridge loses. Gas installation throws flashes of lightning, and the weather frowns. A drop keeps peeling over the edge of dirty dishes. It seems someone had moved into the apartment on so many of my layers while I was traveling, and it patiently awaited my return. Now, there is a birdhouse here, and fire devouring it, the good flame, Strong wind bits separating from water, flaming cranes, blazing cranes. Um, maybe one of my poems that is um, more um, an engaged one. Um, I must say that in spite of all these uh, intellectual uh, labels I was put to like modern surrealism and, uh, or modernism, uh, connecting to also some other modernists, Indian poet and to much as well. Um, I think that the um, most important thing about poetry is compassion. Um, without compassion, poetry has no sense. So, um, then some poems might appear engaged, and some are compassionate to the self. Submerged grave. Um, later on, when I when the poem was written, I realized. At that time, I was writing my um, uh, my masters um, about Malami, Stefan Malami, because Stefan Malami was like very lately translated into Slovenian. So as I was um, thinking so much about his poetry, um, um, there were images inspired by um, the poem, the poem Le Tombeau de, de Virgo. Um, and particularly one line that is speaking about snakes from uh, a which is biblical. 
and according to those like that. The world is swaying on a long letter. And whoever can't afford to buy a table today slides, slides off like overripe wine grapes. Tomorrow, it'll be too late to see which starter the paper war has brought us to. Our tongue is long, un unending, harmless snake winding between our hands, piercing its way through a broken bread, toasted and untoasted from every side. And you are surprised at how, way beyond hunger, the sunken captain ushers his command. hurting my eye, but everyone tells me there's nothing there. Long days after it's meant to have surfaced, I can feel it again in the grain of sand which lodges under my eyelid. 
The grain, the grain is our island, where every new day we can forget. Right there in the grain, we eat rare dishes. Want more? More and more doubts can come tumbling off people's lips, calling out noisily to each other. Flocks of pigeons in Paris pecking, pecking at soil garbage. Escalator down shafts of civilization that are diluted. We let the Slovenian island thirst down into the grain of sand. In a messy breeze, people on bicycles are thrown about the tarmac. Fish cast on sand can't swim out from dry land. Even the island shudders beneath the blasts of wind, folding like a window of sand. For a moment, in the reflection, beyond the car, the image of us fractures. But while driving, this has not yet become clear. The flashes of cars stare into people like fat carp, with little tails of the lashes on fake eyes. And in the clumsy to and fro of these tails, while falling in an arc towards the asphalt, I can feel the dress of Marie Antoinette around my waist. Time gently places some armor next to my head. Time to tell it straight I'm saying no to the view from the car's cage. But the black metal freaks don't allow themselves to be interrupted in their awkward swing across the salty earth. Walks to the edge of the sea, 
white on the surface. They touch its roughness, delicate snow wrinkled on the skin of the water. Under the slender vaults of the lemon morning, Ultima Thule was so near in the moment they felt free. Elements wicker. Heavy swords wait for us inside our hearts. Halls full of massive snow where mothers raise their heads. While cutting willow, I had to utter what was in my dream, how those letters made their way into the wicker basket. And then I have been writing them in my mind. And it felt as if everyone had died at, died at the central point, saturated with sun. And if they had and if they had wanted to die, sorry, as if they had wanted to die into this thick, white hot blindness. It was the death of form beyond. Love is to be admitted the way it is. Stormy, fiery, riding on, riding a horse, don't look back at the husk that the jealous are throwing under its hooves. Elements, metal. Hand in our victory. We are laughing like hands and opening. Suddenly, a doe runs in front of the barrels of a gun. Behind the flesh, the man stays still, blinded, white as a child. Without uttering a word, he becomes one with the branch. No longer can anyone approach the apple's thick gold wall. The baby, strewn with gold dust, is heavy in the arms. And at the great ringing of the red evening bells, a shudder of fear flashes through someone facing this perfect bronze mother who is in the thoughts of those. When, when, when they make love. And the last element, element air. It was, this was written during the war um, in Exodus, so but again, but, uh, war doesn't appear um, directly. Today, Europe is just an empty ocean with a handful of island clouds where we see cocktails freed of care. The land is gone. We made a deal that is better finished. A woman, all of green cicada song whales, is lifting pebble continents one by one with tender gestures. A crumb of light strains her throat. A sun wind ripples over what was land, land now gone, and all Europe, spellbound, stays silent.
third main, I suppose, was finding more language, focus on language to images. So that is one surprising thing that I uh, have uh, poems are full of uh, very dense images. So now it's open to anyone, anyone want to have any questions. I think that uh, um, with poetry, one of the rules is uh, that uh, a poem shouldn't be exhausted <laughs> by different readings. <laughs> so, um, with this density, um, it's, uh, it's interesting that maybe um, each of the readers can find their own experience in it. Like, while I was writing it, I met something. And like when I'm reading it in different countries, like always there is a different experience that, that imprints into the text. So this is what is interesting about poetry, I think. Um, so I don't know if you would agree with me. You know, I don't know about uh, truly beautiful words. Please identify yourself. Uh, I'm Mary Joy. I'm a student of, uh, pursuing a master's in English literature from Delhi University. Uh, I wanted to ask that um, before you had written the poem on the idea of Ulysses and his taking on the final voyage, did you, were you inspired by Tennyson's work? On Ulysses, this poem, famous poem, which ends with the line to seek, to strive, to find, and not to yield. Were you inspired from that? I mean, it's somewhat. Um, in fact, um, I was studying also classical philology, so um, strangely enough, I was inspired by a conference of. Uh, classical philology, <laughs> um, where they were um, talking a lot about uh, this concept of ultima thule. So, um, the, the inspiration, you never know where it comes from, but um, I'm really happy that um, um, when uh, when you have studied literature and uh, you have been reflecting on um, realities that have happened or are happening in different countries, uh, unconsciously this material melts, let's say, in, uh, in your emotions and then it comes out as your own experience. So, um, um, there are a lot of uh, poets that have been writing about um, Ulysses. Uh, so I think that, you know, also my contribution can only be a really small pebble. But um, we're happy to have poetry exactly because it's small pebbles that we can like give to each other, share like uh, small gifts. Thank you, thank you very, very much. It was just stunning and very beautiful and also very beautifully articulated, I thought, the, the poetry itself. Um, curious about a couple of things. Uh, Professor uh, Sachdanan talked about the density of language, so did uh, Mr. Rajmohan and also alluded to. Uh, there is a I've been following Slovenian poetry for a long time uh, and it's interesting to see how the tone has shifted. Um, even though the aspect of density was brought up, mm -hmm. I don't actually find Slovenian poem poetry dense. It's actually very, very lucid and clear. The images are complex. Now, if complexity is uh, misinterpreted or reinterpreted or alternately interpreted as dense, then that's uh, one point of view. But the lyric tonality and the lyric quality in Slovenian poetry is actually quite um, an aberration or uh, perhaps uh, yes. unique to the region because if you follow Yugoslavian poetry for, for instance before the breakup 
Slovenian poetry that way has uh, two sides to language. One is absolute crystal clear clarity, which almost can sound like prose sometimes if you're reading, because there's a lot of prose poetry as well in your tradition. Uh, uh, so many, I mean, he's talking about so many. Can, uh, tell, us, tell us about how the generation after you views these things. Because in India, certainly, there's been a huge shift. Uh, it's following a model of American slam poetry, which is completely, it's valid, but it's completely. Uh, not part of a certain kind of traditions. So I'm just very curious about your, yeah. the next generation. Yeah, I agree completely that, um, you know, maybe Tomar Sharon is not the best example, but uh, because he was combining like these clear um, images, but also very uh, crazy ones. Um, while the generation that is writing now, including Eastrocks, um, uh, Sonic poetry um, and most of the poetry in Slovenian is, let's say, narrative, let's be honest. Um, and I'm quite an exception. I am quite an exception, although I've been relying on. Um, there is another poem, poet that you might not have um, met in Slovenian poetry, who is a huge figure, but he's untranslatable, more or less. His name is Nico Grafenauer. Um, and he was one of the leaders of this group uh, around the uh, novel Via New Review, which was one of the um, vehicles of the Slovenian independence. So it was very important in the 90s uh, where they were um, published, they had publishing house, they had this review, and so this was the top where you could publish. Um, his poetry was uh, very obscure, um, inspired by uh, German poets and Malarmé. He was the one who was writing like Malarmé before Malarmé was really translated into Slovenian. So let's say Malarmé was translated into Slovenian like 100 years after, which is quite a shame. But um, because we are, we are a nation of translators, we um, value the translations as much as our own language. That's typical maybe for small languages, but not for all small, small languages, because in Wales they would like just run away from English and they would say, no, we don't want to translate from English, uh, which is like um, maybe an exception or not. But anyway, um, through the history, Starting with the translation of the Bible, we have become a nation of translators. So, um, but, but yeah, this particular case uh, was, uh, it was like in incarnating the hermetic aspect of poetry, which was not available. So, um, let's say the Malamese poetry, which was not suitable for the time of the um, socialist um, government or socialist, come, let's say, yeah, socialist period. We were living in uh, under Tito. Everybody knows Slovenia more as a part of ex Yugoslavia here than, than uh, as Slovenia. Um, and uh, I must say, I'm also proud of that period. Uh, but, uh, um, this was another, this was another um, movement that has been leading, uh, that has been like um, a little bit nationalist for the language. Like this was um, a current that was establishing a Slovenian, nation, a Slovenian state through the, our, our dreams of being an independent language. So um, the narrative um, part uh, of, of our poetry is now, I must say, very um, popular. Like it's also more readable. It's uh, more easily sellable, let's say. Um, but um, what do you mean by that? It's like 
like um, editing houses would prefer to edit easy, easily readable poets. Accessible, yes. Um, because this is like um, what I'm writing is is too demanding for an ordinary reader, yeah. let's say, because there are a lot of. Um, um, although I think that um, these interactions with uh, with the literary um, influences that I grab, that I um, mix in my poetry, should not be the ones who are determining it, the reading. The, the reading should help, like happen without uh, without this, and you can then also add this if you want. Um, so yeah, what I, what I wanted to say is that um, there are um, young poets who are writing even much more hermetic than I am. Yes, um, and uh, and people. Uh, like critics would say, oh, this is the heritage of Thomas Shalman. I don't know if it is or not, but it exists. Only, um, I don't know um, how it will go on, but um, for me, I must say that it is an organic combination of um, something that is clear and something <coughs> that is, um, let's say, hermetic or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Number one. <coughs> I love books very much, and uh, they are quite intricate. They are intricate and they are imaginary, and if uh, they are touch free, and uh, they have certain intellectual toughness about them. So, so I, I tried to do two of your poems in my language, but I could not fail one, um, one. so I will read only one poem in English. It's, uh, uh, it's called the Venetian Tide, and then later on. Oh, okay. Venice had to ask, and he put it on. Sarkin Chisle Pani se Bhari. They are very smart guys. Dushari, Yapi Khan Dushane Kuli Bhi Sarkopar Pani. Chach Chata Pata Hai. Uchalka Bhuva. या फिर हम ही तर बतर हो चुके लगता है जिन्हें पता नहीं कि कोई चीज टूट पड़ी है यूरोप एक मछली के बराबर अभी उमस भरे आसमान की तरह उसे ले रहा है लगता है यह सिर्फ गर्मी की कौन है लेकिन पूछताछ चलती ही रहती है पीछे छोड़ी गई चीजें बेचैन है घर से निकासी के दौरान मोजे किसी और के सामान में पाए गए और अब उन्हें खींच कर एक गमंद बनाया जा रहा है युद्ध ऐसा युद्ध जहाँ फुटपाथ पर पानी भरा है और पतक है अपनी चोटों से लोहे के भारी लंगर उठाकर ले जाने की कोशिश कर रही है लंगरों की जंजीरें उखड़ कर उनके जलों में फंस सकती जहाज केंद्र से इतने ज्यादा दूर उतर भरे पूछताछ कक्ष में एक नामानुम सी लेदार शेरेडी उतर भरे पूछताछ कक्ष में एक नामानुम सी लेदार कुछ न समझने वाले कानों को सुना रही है खुले हुए आसमान के नीचे बच्चों की करार जिसने कोई वजह नहीं यूरोप अपने बंद नसों को खोलता है अपने बंद समुद्र को एक छोटा सा द्वीप उस पर आंखों में सूझी हुई सियाह झुकियाँ आंखों के आंख के नक्शे में उसकी शराबों की बारीक रेखाएं सिकुड़ती हैं उसे कहीं भेजना असंभव है डाक व्यवस्था का गड़बड़ है और चिड़िया अपनी वो कलर भूल चुकी है पानी आंखों में बरकरार है पिसाव के खिसकते जाते हैं द्वीप से मेरे पास सिर्फ आधा उधा सामान है इतिहास से जर्द पड़ चुके इस कमरे में शहर में सब कुछ बंद है पानी के अलावा पानी के हृदय पतखों के कारण सफेद है हैरान परेशान फौरे उड़ते हैं जवान तो तो
And uh, next two programs, uh, tomorrow, if you have anybody going here at 80, at 4 p.m. And the day after tomorrow in uh, Jawaharlal University, also at 4 p.m., uh, readings in various Indian languages. And next program here is on 23rd, uh, 100th uh, septenary anniversary of Abdul Haman Bidnodi. Uh, it's in Urdu. So all of you are most welcome. Thank you.